Alright guys, have to grab a key in today. I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And with the organisations locking in their rosters for the 2022 season, Gunners has revealed that he presently has no offers from any CDL teams, not even as a substitute for the moment. Is this a major mistake by the journal managers in the league? And could some teams actually give him an offer? The likes of Optic maybe, given the history he had on Chicago Huntsman a couple of years ago. Very much into it to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it plenty to discuss today. First of all, I just wanted to mention six teams have confirmed their rosters. Well, I think maybe it's technically five teams, but we know that uh, Los Angeles Thieves are going to stay together. I don't think they've actually said that their roster is going to be the same, but of course we know that it will be. So six teams we know, six teams we do not yet know, although we have a rather good idea what these teams are planning to do. This just to mention, because of course the teams are going to look in their starting rosters, then they're going to have a good idea as to who their coach is going to be, staffing around the team, then is probably where they get their sub spot because the teams might decide to wait quite some time to lock in a substitute because they don't necessarily need to hurry just because, okay, the game launches, you see which kids are good, you pick them up if they're pretty cracked, that's how it tends to go. Now, of course, you might honestly want to do that and try and get a real star player for your bench or you get a kind of a talented, known quantity player that can fill a number of roles and has a good amount of experience. That's one option. This also to mention, Parasite is back in business. He's undeactivated his Twitter account, I suppose, reactivated his Twitter account. He's got a nice new profile picture here so you know he's got the Astros on he's looking like he's a bit of a coach so hopefully he gets a spot in the league this another remarkable piece of news actually from Rise Nation if you guys have been around the league for quite some time you will know this organization pre-CDL Rise were one of the biggest and most successful teams to be honest for a few years span their best year I suppose was World War II when Gunners was actually on their roster and they won at what three events that season they won Atlanta with Looney TJ Gunners and Methods they then dropped Methods after like stage one playoffs or something thing for Sasha, then they won Anaheim, they won Seattle, and they were probably favourites going into the World Championship, but they got top 16 in the ends. But um, yeah, Rise, well-known organisation. Some have hopes that at some point or another they might be able to get into the CDL if they have the funding to do so. Maybe they can buy Paris or something, that seems unlikely, but maybe it's possible. Now, they're actually announcing Temp is, a, well, a professional Call of Duty player. Not for them, though, but for Vegas and a content creator for them. So he's effectively a client for Rise Talent Agency. So this is kind of interesting just because maybe this is what Rise are kind of pursuing now, some more the, like the agency side, because in fairness, this is what a lot of, um, you know, organizations already do. If you're a player for 100 Thieves, they are effectively your agency for, you know, deals, like, you know, sponsorship deals and the like, and they'll take their cut and that's how they'll do it. So that's kind of how a lot of these organizations already operate and uh, seemingly Rise Nation are looking to hop on the bandwagon to some degree, but cool to see them getting involved to some degree in the Call of Duty side again by getting Temp on board. So, you know, I guess the Vegas Legion are too poor to do this for themselves or whatever. So, you know, cool stuff regardless, and um, and therefore maybe it's an indication that Rise could come back. I would certainly like that to be the case. This just to mention real quick on the potential substitute bench side for the upcoming season. Hixie is potentially implying like uh, what exactly is going on here with Beans. So we believe that Beans is going to be the sub for the Boston Breach this upcoming season. Hixie we believe is going to be the sub for the Toronto Ultra after they decided to get Standy in place of Vance in the spot where they wanted Afro, but Minnesota got Afro, so they've got Standy instead. It seems Hixie's going to be there. Beans is probably going to be on the Boston match, but I did wonder if this is kind of implying, okay, is he hyped for Beans to be out in the state, or is he hyped for them to team up in challenges? You would expect that Beans would play on the challenges roster with the Boston Academy, right? With Doug, Shawnee, and Volant, I believe, as it presently is. But maybe there's a possibility there. This is the other thing to mention, kind of confirming to some degree that the London guys aren't in the greatest spot. Gizmo kind of uh, tweeting this to Harry. Of course, Harry was actually the brief replacement for Gizmo on that London team last year when Gizmo had to go home. Maybe implying here these guys could run it up in challenges. Gizmo might get a spot this year, but the present rumour is that they're going to drop Gizmo for Paul X on the London team. And then I guess Harry's going to be gone as well. And then maybe they're going to team up in challenges. Who knows? There was a brief rumour that Gizmo can actually go the way of the Florida Mutineers, but it now looks like they're getting Brack instead as their flex player. A kind of a good player from a couple of years ago. Brack, I suppose, has earned this opportunity back. But some may question why is Brack getting a spot or, you know, players like this if Gunners is still up there without a spot as it 
presently stands. Wanted to mention this real quick on the Clayster front as well, an update from Clay as to what's going on from his perspective because he's still trying to get a spot. He says, appreciate those that reached out. I'll let you all know what's been going on and what the future looks like as soon as I can. So maybe a marginally more positive message here from Clayster than we have seen previously. A few days ago, he seemed to be very downbeat on his possibility to even get a spot in the league. But I do wonder, like, what are Vegas going to do if they don't get Clay right? It doesn't make much sense to me to not get Clay into the Vegas team if they can. Like, um, you know, what other ARs really are there out there that they would want that aren't Clayster right? And TJ and Tim, if they decide if that is the team or two, they want to play with Clay, like, that's probably what they'll do. So, like, if Clay can get a spot, if the money works out, if the contract works out or whatever, like, I think Clay to Vegas should, should happen. I don't know if it will happen, but this maybe seems marginally more confident because a few days ago he said that he doesn't reckon he's going to get a spot. He seemed frustrated at Boston potentially for, you know, maybe stringing him along and trying to say he was going to get a spot and then making the call to go with Methods instead. Maybe it was another team he was talking about. Of course, we don't know 100%, but that was potentially reading between the lines there. So yes, Clay is maybe marginally more confident now he's going to get a spot in the league. He says he'll let us know what's going on as soon as he possibly can. So either that's a spot on, on Vegas or a spot elsewhere, which seems unlikely, or out of the league entirely and retiring from the scene, which certainly, hopefully, will not be the case. But another player struggling for a spot right now is none other than Gunless, if the tweet wants to load. Here it is. Just a crumb of a sub spot, please. I just want to retain my visa so I can play challenges and earn my spot back. So quite the statement really here from Gunless, right? Because Gunless, a legendary player, one of the best in Call of Duty history to have never won a world championship ring. There's no doubt about it. Many event victories over the years, especially that World War II season that I just mentioned where he came in in World War II and was the best flex player in the game. Infinite Warfare at times just before that he was the best player in the game. Even the year after World War II in Black Ops 4, he was absolutely dominant at Fort Worth that season for LG. They came, well, they won that event. He had like a 1.35 KD or something. Even the year after that on Huntsman right in Modern Warfare, he was pretty good right at the start, especially when they won that London event back in February. So a very consistent trend with Gunners is wins an event in either March or February. Then things fall off a cliff, the team breaks up and chemistry issues kind of, well, come to, come to rise really. And that's the issue with Gunless that some organizations might deem it a serious risk getting Gunless on your team. Of course, the last couple of years since franchising haven't been so successful, got dropped after the kind of drama with Envoy on that Huntsman team, it seems. And then I, even after that, right, a lot settled surge, it wasn't particularly pretty. That squad, and then this year on Los Angeles Grillers, they put him to the bench because he's unwell, Gunless, right? He had, he had the illness, right, that we'll talk here in a second. And, um, and then, well, by the time they bring him back after they won Major 2 without him, then the team is kind of collapsing and Gunless comes in and doesn't really help matters. And, um, and that's the thing, like Sasha Gunners, also they had their differences of opinion back in the World War II days. And that's the thing, like every single year Gunners has these kind of concerns. So seemingly no organization wants to give him a spot, not even a sub spot yet. Now, as I say, I don't think necessarily that uh, the teams will lock down their substitute positions yet. And also thought his statement was interesting. I just want to retain my visa, right? Saying that without a sub spot, he, um, well, his visa, I guess, would run out, his Canadian visa to, well, come to the US. And therefore he'd have to play in challenges from Canada, which wouldn't be good. We saw the likes of Havoc, for example, decided and made the kind of questionable call at the time to leave the Florida Mutineers. He could have had a sub spot on Florida. He decided to leave, go to Texas and play in Texas with what ended up being the Texas Nation team and having great success and earning his spot back. So that's pretty baller from Havoc, right? He decided, look, I want to go to Texas. That's where I need to be if I want to play on the highest level in challenges due to the internet stuff. And then he made it work, right? He joined Rocker. He's now going to get a starting spot, it seems, on the Florida Mutineers Havoc going into next year. If Gunners is playing from Canada, then he might get the Jimbo treatment, right? Playing from Canada is not easy at all. The internet is definitely disadvantageous. So he wants a sub spot so he can get his visa, stay in the US and make that work, right? And look, maybe other organizations are going to look at this and say, well, damn, this guy only wants to join us for the visa rather than to add value to our team. But of course, Gunners wants to earn his spot back and still be a valuable part of an organization. Now, look, is it a big miss by these teams not getting Gunners? Because as I say, he's had, um, well, a great history. I, I think at his, on his day, he's a really solid player. This season, he was pretty good for a time on the Los Angeles as good as probably in their most consistent players. His numbers, probably their most consistent player at the start of this year. His numbers are pretty good, all things considered, right? He gets an 80 overall here, but obviously didn't play that much of this season, unfortunately, for Gunners. And then, um, of course, he had the illness, right? He had to step away from the team for a time. He had the surgery, and uh, thankfully, everything went okay for Gunners. But yes, if, if that hadn't have happened right before Major 2, who knows what happens? Because they were looking pretty good before Major 2. Now, look, would they have won with Gunners instead of Spart? That's the question because of the Volk, the S&D prowess that Spart brought. They probably don't don't win with Gunless, I imagine, instead of spark that tournament. But um, but even the decision after the season was over to let go of Gunless as an unrestricted free agent, I guess they thought he wouldn't have many offers on the market. 
and they decided to get Spartan as their full-time flex player instead of Gunless, maybe because they think the chemistry or whatever will work better with Spartan instead of Gunless. So definitely an interesting decision. But um, I mean, yeah, maybe Gunless goes to that tourney if he doesn't get injured or doesn't get ill, sorry, doesn't have to have the surgery and um, for the kind of issues and the health problems that he was having, goes to that tourney, does rather well. The team keeps on going, moving upwards, qualifies for champs. Who knows how things look, right? But as it turned out, Gunless got benched for the team. They brought him back briefly. It didn't work there to bench him again. And, uh, and now he finds himself without even a spot. But definitely does make me wonder, really, looking at some of these teams, the likes of New York, the fact they've got Priester, the fact that Florida have got Brack, right? These are a couple of spots where you would have thought that Gunner should have been in consideration. Yes, maybe from a chemistry perspective, people maybe don't have as much confidence in Gunner as they did in the past, but I'm still kind of surprised that a guy of this caliber is not getting the light of day from some of these organizations to at least give it a go to try and be a top player once again. So definitely enjoy to your thoughts on that, right? And I guess the next question is, if Gunner doesn't get a spot, as it doesn't seem like he will, then where does he go on the sub bench, right? Because I'd be mind blown if he doesn't get a sub spot. Like, surely that will happen. I just think that maybe a bit of patience required from the likes of maybe Gunless and Parasite and these guys, because these teams are going to take a little bit of time to lock these guys in where they want to be in terms of their coaches, their analysts, their substitute players, right? They don't necessarily have to get one yet. They can wait quite some time until the season starts, really, to get their substitute player in. Gunless, to me, is pretty much an ideal candidate, though, in some respects, because he's a great flex player. He can run an AR, run an SMG, has got good experience with many players. Maybe an optic sub spot could be interesting because I said that TJ might be a decent player for that spot because he's also kind of a flexible player with experience with those guys. Gunless is kind of in a similar boat there, right? So I think Gunless will get a sub spot somewhere and I hope he does well get the opportunity to earn his spot back in the league. But um, yeah, difficult times for Clay and Gunless, players like this that, you know, great players, of course, but now all of a sudden there's other players that you might not expect to get a spot getting a spot ahead of them. Is that a good decision? Is that a bad decision? You guys can, of course, decide in the comment section below. Before we close out the video, I wanted to talk about this because I thought this is phenomenal the Crone and Roosevelt put together last night. This is what we want to see. The season ends, the World Championship is over, right? You know, roster menu has happened and then after a month or so, just before the new game comes out, we drop the World Cup of Call of Duty. Especially would be good in the World Cup. Yeah, hopefully the CDL takes note of this because this would be fantastic. Like instead of all the all-star thing that likes to go on sometimes. But yeah, these are the teams that Crone put together. So of course there will be many questions here. Is this the best team? Should they have done something different? How can you leave Scump out of the Team USA, whatever? You could also do like a Team a USA West and a USA East, which would be kind of interesting. But this is what Crone reckons. So USA, he's gone for Selium, Sib, Kenny, and Simp. He's got Envoy and Octane on the bench. Crowder and Jacob actually as the coaching duo. Kind of interesting just because those two guys won a world championship together when Crowder used to be called Replays back in the day. Canada is pretty nasty as well. Like Dashi, Gunless, Asim, and Illy. Like, not really sure what happened to the SMGs on that team. You might need to think about it a little bit differently, but maybe Illy can run a sub. Of course, Rambo is the coach. Team England I quite like as well, actually. Insight, Zero, Bants, and Afro. Zero, I guess, can be the flex. This SMG duo is kind of nice. Mexico as well. I'm sure there'll be discussions on this because people are saying, well, you know, Shotzi, Attach, not really Mexican, but I believe Attach has Japanese and Mexican blood. Shotzi, I think, maybe has, um, well, some heritage from El Salvador and also Mexico. I think he just calls himself Hispanic, but I think this could potentially work. So that's something to note as well. Team Mexico is kind of nice, though, but a lot of ARs. Then you've got the French team, of course, with Brezzi and Hydra and the boys. The Spanish team would be pretty good. Scotland have even got Kells there and Cami, Shawnee, like that would be a good team. Team Australia, of course, with Pred leading the line and then Cronus and the like. So, I mean, yeah, potentially some good teams here. This would be fantastic to watch, as I'm saying. Like, you could do this other ways, USA East and West. You could have a couple of USA teams, maybe just to make things a little bit fairer or allow more people to compete. And it'd be good to see some other countries involved as well, right? Because as Kleenex kind of says here, Team Denmark, right? It's one versus the world, right? Pretty much only Kleenex from Denmark. And there's not many players in Belgium as well, right? It's kind of a, a shame because back in the CWL days, pre-CDL, I remember the kind of Black Ops 3 season that would be going on. There would all the time there would be like, um, you know, players appearing from Germany and other countries like this and having really great results or like at least being competitive. And nowadays those scenes are just kind of dead, right? Even as a uh, Chrome points out here, players from Sweden, there basically is no players from Sweden even left anymore because they all just decided to retire and move on. And you can't exactly blame them, but it means that, uh, you know, the World Cup isn't quite as extensive as it could be, but nonetheless, still pretty exciting, right? As Octane says here, you know, Australia got a Cronus. I don't know how favoured the USA really is. But uh, yeah, the US team is pretty nice on paper here if Kenny can run the SMG to a good level. Of course, this is the Vanguard World Cup, so it's generally based on which teams and players did well during Vanguard. Did these players win events? Do they have good results in Vanguard? Those are kind of the guys that generally Krona's gone for here. And the ones that were the best on this particular title. But yeah, I'd love to see a World Cup or something happen in the offseason pretty much every single year. Like, um, I think that'd be great for the COD scene. And just to mention this from Diaz Biffle as we close out, I thought it was pretty funny. It was like, look, thank God 
on Methods isn't on here because that team would have no chance of winning at all if that was the case. Of course, Biffle versus Methods. The drama continues on that one. But very much into into your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. It's also YouTube gods. This is a good video. I'd also like you should see it as well. And hope grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care of yourselves. And I'll see you next time.